day and welcome to the Rocket Podcast, conversations to take you places. As usual, we try and hunt down interesting, intelligent people. Today, we found Brett Lewis. I'm not sure which one he fits into, but he fits into one of those two categories. Brett, being a self-confessed IT geek and serial entrepreneur, has built an online store from nothing after a trip to the Okavango Delta. I was there and I witnessed some of this. Camera Stuff is now a major player in the photographic lighting and accessories market, as well as a point of knowledge amongst photographers all over. Since the internet was an idea, Brett has been fascinated by the possibilities of technology. I've watched as he's unlocked the potential of technology in his businesses over and over again. From simple table updates to complex integrations, the first to use robotics that I found, seldom has Brett been stumped by a business problem that can't be solved by technology. And all this in an attempt to improve service, minimize manual repetition, and give more time for customer interactions that add value. Today, Brett is going to share some of the secrets that has taken his business to the next level. Brett, I'm really glad that you've joined us and for dressing up. It's wonderful. I was a little bit worried when we went when we had that discussion. But before we start today, Brett, what is an average Brett day? How's that looking? All right. You look the average fabulous. Brett day. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The average Brett day. I get up around seven. I'm not a good early starter. Um, if Angie, my wife, can convince me, we, we meditate for a little, we do a little stretching, yeah. and then I'll start my day around nine or, or 10. Um, jump, jump into emails to start. Uh, yeah, and just see, di- jump onto my, onto my collaboration apps with my team, see what's happening, and then just uh, make, it, make it through the day. Generally, it's putting out fires. It's, mm. it's a little unpredictable. I am still involved in the operational stuff though i'm trying to extract myself from that but i am still involved in that and keeping the systems running etc and then i i tail off around three o'clock these days i'm trying and then i head to the park for a bit of a a run walk i run on the downhills and walk on the (laughs) on the uphills and then i and then yeah in the evenings watch a bit of tv and often i find myself back in front of my pc doing some research or building some systems. Awesome. We're going to get into that now. Um, Brett, how much would you say is spent online versus offline? Um, If you had 100%, where do you think you will split is now that camera stuff is quite mature? In terms of my day? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So the business is, is fully online. I moved everything into the cloud a few years ago. I really don't do very much offline. At the moment, I've been working remotely. I'm probably going to head back to the office for a bit, but our team does work um, some remotely and some at the shop, but I really spend most of my time online. I, If I read, I'm reading on an app. If I'm researching, I'm doing that through YouTube. So, and very few meetings. I, I don't really, I'm not a great believer in, in meetings where, okay. where you don't need to have it. So yeah, mostly online, mostly online. Awesome. We've gone into 2022 and some people are saying it's almost like um, it's just stretched 2021 on because it's, it's uh, quite a lot of pressure. There's quite a lot going down. But I think it's the year of great change and the world catching up with the way of work and becoming comfortable with this, this hybrid work environment. What excites you for 2022 from your perspective, Brett? Well... There's things that scare me and things that excite me, but I guess I guess from an, an excitement perspective, I'm I'm really hopeful that that we get our head around living finally living with with COVID. Um, people do seem to be getting into a rhythm now, and and I'm really hoping that that we have less ups and downs and more just kind of flat, because uh, we we've come from a strong in in my business a strong two years of growth since covid and i'm really excited for for further growth uh, awesome. there are certain things that have been hugely disruptive and still mm. are but yeah i guess growth and maybe a bit more normality or being able to deal with 
with Corona. Impacted all of us so much. Why yep. is it so important that technology is at the heart of camera stuff for you? It was one of the tenants when you put this business together that tech was going to be driving it. Well, technology for us gives us the huge ability to box above our weight. So as, as a small business, you, you struggle to compete with the likes, in our case, take, take a lot. We're going head on head with take a lot who are a huge business and we're a, a little seven person business. So technology is, is, is one of my core areas of competence. And, and it's been an area that has translated into a area of unique competitiveness. Okay. So, so it's, it's one way in which we can differentiate, but also a way for us to, to box above our weight by, by doing things like offering all of the tracking and, you know, all of the, the little bells and whistles that you'd expect from a more, a possibly a larger business. Uh, that's certainly why we've done that. Be, being tech heavy, how do you think this benefits the customers? And we were talking about tracking orders and giving visibility in the whole um, value chain. In addition to that, I've read a number of, of your, your fans on your website. That seems to be a common thread that, you know, order is placed, delivery is done. How do you think it benefits your customers and your staff? Well, I, I think what people want these days is they, they want a, a pain-free and stress-free transaction. So from where I'm sitting, the more communication we can give them about what the status of the order is, where it is, what we're doing, the better. So from, from a client perspective, what we're trying to do is be as transparent as possible to remove any possible areas of concern from their side so that they know exactly what's happening and to also give a very consistent experience. You know, there's, a, there's a reason that McDonald's in Istanbul works nearly as well as McDonald's in Hillbrow. That it, it, it's, a, it's a very well-honed recipe that they follow. And when people see the McDonald's sign, you can be in Beijing, you, you're going to get a McDonald's-ish experience wherever you go. And what we're trying to do is give clients a, a consistent experience each time. So if they've ordered once and enjoyed the experience, they should expect that same experience again. And that's what we try, we try to deliver. Fr from a staff perspective, there's, there's a lot of jobs that are just the kind of jobs that suck the life out of your, your soul when you, <laughs> when you have to do these things, menial things over and over. So fr <clears throat> from a staff perspective, I'm also trying to create a, a consistent experience for them, but also try and make, just remove, remove that donkey work from, from the day. If, if there's stuff that's repetitive, if there's stuff that's potentially error prone due to finger hassles, let's just remove that where we can. So, okay. so that is really what I try to do is try and automate any, any process that we can to, to remove repetition, to remove just that drudge work that, okay. that can very easily happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, that means that you're examining camera stuff from all angles mm. all the time. Do you do that deliberately, consciously? Do you sit down and say, okay, we're going to review this process? Or is it just your nature to dig and find better ways of doing things? Yeah, I'm just very inquisitive by nature. So I, I must admit I've had it, kind of dial that back a bit at, at one point I was I was bringing changes in in too fast succession for my staff and and yeah. the thing the thing with testing new stuff is it doesn't always work so introducing something and then having to withdraw it again became a bit of a problem so it, it got to a point where everyone in my team kind of sat back to see if it worked before they bought into it so so I did have to curtail my eagerness to to make changes to things so so now we we change less things um and I, I tried to do more validation and testing by myself in the background before before i i raise it with with my team uh, i realized that that so the tinkering needs to happen in the background and then once we have something viable when i have something viable then i introduce it so that's that's really what I do and, and I, I try and focus on the low hanging fruit. So look at the business and see where the, 
whatever change we're going to make will have the biggest benefit to the business. So constantly trying to to eat away at that low hanging fruit uh, to a point whereby we're we're pretty optimized and and we're a long way from optimized though though we're pretty good. Uh, yeah. Something also applies the is the eighty twenty rule. So I'm a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> and and that. And that is uh, <laughs> being a perfectionist in, in a business can is both a, an advantage and a disadvantage. Yeah. And and you need to really be able to rein that in. Um, and I've tried to do that. So so we we make less changes, less frequently, but try and choose things that are going to uh, bring larger impact. Excellent. That's such a nice idea. And being able to identify the 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 areas in yourself that are actually inhibitors, even though they're enthusiastically rolled out, is yeah. um, quite a brave thing to admit to. Um, there must have been some internal discussions every now and then. That's that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. Who is your business role model and why? I'd have to say Elon Musk. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why? Do you want to be nasty? Do you want to be nasty? Is that it? Why Elon? Look, you, you either love or hate Elon. And, and I really don't want to make any character judgments about Elon. But what, what really fascinates me is the, is the amount of progress he's able to create in relatively short time. If you look at, at as a small player coming in with Tesla, you've had Toyota have been churning out cars and Ford forever. And here's a new kid on the block with a whole new paradigm in vehicles. And he, he almost does the impossible. He almost doesn't kill himself, but he almost, he almost doesn't make it. Um, but he, he really has a, has a knack to simplify things and, and take things back down to their first principle, because we I realize with a lot of our thinking, we we're often, emulating someone else or picking up influence from someone else. And, and when we think we're innovating, what we're actually doing is cobbling something onto something else that someone else developed. Yes. And it, and it yes. isn't always a great path to follow. You, you, I think what he does in a lot of respects is he goes right back to basics and says, what are we trying to do here? And tries to find a solution. And interestingly, one thing he does that when, when it gets to a point where he's struggling too much, to find a solution, he throws more effort at redefining the problem than trying to solve the solution or solve the problem, wow. which is which is a, which is a very interesting thing to do because I think we do throw if we're struggling with something we throw more and more resources at it, but actually the the, the question could be wrong. So that is something something that he'll do. Something else that he'll do is he'll is he'll he encourages innovation to a degree that if you innovate and succeed that's the first prize if you innovate and fail that's fine he doesn't he really doesn't have a problem that if you don't innovate that's when he has a problem okay. so it's about having that kind of mindset where where you're inquisitive about things and where you'd like to not just reinvent things for reinvention's sake mm. but 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 question what you do and try and simplify all of the time how do you apply that to camera stuff well, I try and look at what we're doing and, and ask, ask myself, what are we actually trying to achieve with this? Okay. And, and try and dig down to get to the core answer and, and try and, if, if you've got an answer, try and, and try and simplify the answer again and again until you really get to the, the simplest concept and, and then see if, if what you're doing is actually solving that or or if it's picked up a whole lot of kind of intellectual baggage along the way and you're okay. mostly solving that but also solving something else which doesn't need to be solved okay was there a big break have you have you had one of those that stood out so i can just because it's you, you you're talking and i'm hearing but i don't think i'm understanding on a practical level how we can do that i mean you've got to collect money you've got to invoice a customer that's no. really simple. How do no. you simplify what essentially you're in a distribution business? You've got, you've got accessories, you've got a customer that needs them, and you've got staff that need to fulfill an order, and you've got three or four systems. What, what does it mean to you to simplify that? Well, 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 here's an example. For example, 
<laughs> You've got two examples <laughs> in an example. See, yeah, this exactly. Is the okay. <laughs> Give so, me an example so, of an example that may be an example for us, please. All right, I think I can think of something that may be suitable. So, so I have because we source a lot of product from China and from a whole variety of suppliers, we've got very differing lead times depending on the product. And yeah. one of our challenges has been management of inventory. And we used to look at inventory at all inventory items with the same level of importance. And what that meant is that we'd spend a lot of time across the range. But in fact, there were some products which we really shouldn't actually have been stocking or selling. Okay. So, so using the 80-20 principle, and it's really uncanny how, how this pretty much always works, but 80% of our turnover comes from 20% of our products. Yeah. And we started analyzing our products to see how many we actually sold, because it didn't matter if we had them in stock and we had them on our website and the price was right in the description, but actually, is there demand for this? And, and I think some of this, someone who's been in retail before would, would say this is quite a silly thing I should have known about this, but I, I didn't come from a retail background. Yeah. I, I did a, a construction degree, didn't work in that, and then that, and then just evolved to where I was. So I had no experience in e-commerce or retail. Uh, and just I arrived here through kind of iteration. But but that was that's one example where we actually at one point I sat back and thought we're wasting our time with so many of these other items. Why are we even giving importance? It got to a point where we said we got to trim away straight away 20% of the products had to go 80% of our problems come from 20% 20 of our products get rid of those and so so it's it's so you look at the data and you understand the data from various angles well i, I do love working with data it's one of one of the things i get a kick out of so you may watch a game of rugby and i'd rather sit with a spreadsheet and figure out the means and medians I know it's not very cool. There should actually be a pub where a whole bunch of geeks just sit there on their laptops and don't look at each other and they just bring pizza and no one talks and you, you just do your stuff and then you leave. I'd, love, I'd I think love to go would, to that place. Yeah, I think it would be popular. I think it's actually a great idea. Good Wi-Fi, maybe a couple of gaming consoles and no one talks. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Shh, don't talk. We were, yeah. Yeah. We call it the library or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, you know where I've got to today is, has been a lot of iteration and and a lot of kind of bumping your head and and yeah. not not finding it works. There's a concept from the lean startup called a minimal viable concept, and yeah. that is something also that I try and use because if, if you're trying to do something you've not done before, you really and and you have no data or any experience with it, you have no idea whether it's going to work or not. So try and do. The smallest version of what you want to do test it if it works expand it if it doesn't work kill it okay so that um, mvp process that agile kind of a process i think it just runs through your blood through your dna and uh, people are formalizing it now with agile and sprints and all the rest of it but that's kind of what you're saying is do this thing try it in a small environment if it works make it a little bit bigger and then embed it if it doesn't don't overanalyze it for too long. Let it go and maybe come back to it later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Brett, you've had a number of businesses. Angie, your, your wife has her own businesses and keeps evolving. What do you think the biggest challenge facing an online business based in South Africa is today? So, so, so one thing I question before I answer the question is, is, is any business, or should I say, let me read, isn't every business an online business to some degree? Now, you may, okay. be, you may, be, talk, you may be speaking to me in the context of a, an e-commerce operation, but I could, I could be selling a service or I could be selling photographic gear as I do, but the, the underlying concepts are, are very similar. I, I think one of the challenges is, is how to, Dis there's so much info out there it's how to discern between the useful and the useless when, when you're building your when you're building your business and also whose opinion whose opinion to believe if you if you try and find a new e-commerce platform you're gonna you're gonna get 
just search top 10 e-commerce platforms 2022 and you're probably going to find 20 that come back to you wow. and and which one do you use and is that article has it been written by some influencer who is trying to push their agenda or is it actually a an impartial lineup of of products and i think this is this is a challenge from anyone that's working in the information domain is is how to discern first of all how to limit the amount of data that you're consuming and also how to figure out what is useful and what is useless okay which which probably isn't the answer you were expecting no the, the, I think you know there's there's i think it's there's perfect. lots of tools out there the fact is that the tools are, are readily available they they're pretty easy to use anyone that's got a any kind of um, technical understanding, even at a basic level, could start building, could, could start building and selling. I, yeah. I think one thing yeah. that, that is an important thing, even though you're selling online, business acumen, actually understanding things like marketing and finance, yeah. all, of, all of these boring parts, you know, the inter- whacking up a website and social media, this is all the sexy part of the business. But, but the fundamentals, cash flows and forecasts and all of that that boring stuff that's also very important i see a lot of photographers for example who want to become professional photographers and they take reasonably good photographs but they don't understand business and and they start then falling down with cash flow i see these guys spending loads of money The, the misconception is that the better your gear is the the better your images will be and the more you'll be able to charge or the more clients you'll get. And then you, you have a rude awakening at some point that you've got a room full of gear, but you, but you've got a negative cash flow. So it, it's a, I would, I would say understanding, you know, business understanding I'm beating about the bush, but this is kind of no, how my mind works. So you that. just have, to, just have to excuse as we meander through this forest of knowledge, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, I think that the technology side really has, become a lot lot more accessible and easy I, five years ago it was tricky and it's also got it's it's inexpensive so the costs to run it are, are not going to be your challenge but i think the business side ultimately you can you can dream up an awesome business but if you can't find clients you don't really have a viable business and i think a lot of people think that I, all right i've created my websites there was a huge surge during COVID of people setting up online businesses thinking they can create a side hustle that may be their main hustle. And then a few months later, I saw people complaining that they've had this website up. It looks great, but they've had no sales. And then a few months later, people trying to sell this shell of a site, which actually isn't, isn't worth anything. So it's, there's elements there that, that are very traditional in their base. And, and regardless of what business you are, you, you need a reasonable grasp of those. Otherwise, you, you're not going to get the rubber to the road, as it were. You, you're kind of going to sit like a car on bricks and your wheels are going to turn, but you're going to go nowhere. <laughs> and you may just burn t- time and money and get nowhere fast. But yeah. yeah. Brett, yeah, think, you, you, mm-hmm. you've spoken about um, the apps being um, cheaper now, the platforms being cheaper, the tools there to run the business. Without the Ackerman, yeah. you're not going to be able to do this. Um, um, yep. But you seem to, it's easy for you. you. You know about new trends, new technology. Where do you self-educate? How do you always stay ahead? Why am I always phoning you for advice on what's coming up? <laughs> well, the, the first thing you do is you get rid of all of your friends. So that, that gives you a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of spare time instantly. So, and, don't have, and don't have children. So if okay. you've got no friends and you've got no children, you've got lots of time to spend in front of YouTube. Um, I, I'm, I'm very inquisitive by nature, so I find myself seeing a hint of something and following and following and following, and then registering for some service and trying the trial, and and then leaving it and coming back to it. So I, I, I really just don't, I'm, I kind of scurry about on the internet and and see what I can find, and, and when something pops up. I, I generally go and have a look at it. it. It may not be of value to me now, but but it may be of value to me in, in the future. So it's just about staying curious, and and I love learning about new stuff. So so I'll often like the search I said top ten e-commerce platforms of 2022. I, I'll do that search probably yeah. twice a year, and wow. I'll do the search 
top 100 Android apps to see if I'm using, and I'll search with keywords like innovative or, or kind of breakthrough. And, and, and they'll often be like Gartner and these huge uh, research organizations will, will come up with trends and, yeah. and, and, and top 10 you know, concepts that may fly in this year. And I try and look at that stuff and just, just immerse myself in that. So I'm always kind of looking from a technology angle in the context of, of my small business. And that's, that means cloud, yeah. cloud apps and services, automation, um, AI, all the data sure. kind of stuff. So, so these are these are things that I find interesting. And, and if you have a look at my YouTube feed, it's there's a lot of that stuff in interspersed with a bit of MMA and you know a few other a weird few things. dodgy so, things that are are coming through as well. Brett, yeah, what, yeah. What, what give me your top three focuses for this quarter? Jan, Feb, March. What what are you what are you investigating yeah. for? Um, so, I, I don't. I can't answer that. I, I actually don't break. Perhaps I should, but I, I'm, I'm a lot more organic, if that's the right word. Yeah, I, I've yeah. I, I don't even have written goals. Kind of what I've found in the last while is things are so unpredictable that that to try and to try and plan that far ahead. For example, I won't find I won't sign a contract in my business for six months even. For me, six months is a long way away. Wow. So so I. I at the moment, I'm just slowly nibbling away at, at what we're doing. I am looking, for example, for another e-commerce platform. We're on one which works, but I'm not happy with. So I'm constantly yeah. scurrying around. So there's kind of a few areas of interest. Um, I'm really am trying. So I'm trying to work myself out of my business and out of my job at the moment. It's, you know, in terms of my retirement path, I, yeah. I can't do this forever. And yeah. so, and also for, for, for us to be able to scale the business, we've seen a lot of growth and what we haven't done is added a lot of manpower. We've, we've used automation and tools which scale yeah. very easily. You can throw another $9 or $30 or $50 at something and double its capacity. So yeah. I'm really just doing more of the same, but, but trying to simplify even more what, what we do. Um, one of Elon's things, he was saying, if you're not taking steps out of processes that you're doing, and having to add them back because you took too many out, you're, you're not doing your job. So you, you need to simplify, simplify, simplify. And wow. for, for me, it's simplify and automate. And that's, that's really, so I kind of more got a theme rather than specific yeah, goals. I love that. Simplify and automate. Um, I'm going to ask you quite a, an interesting one now from my perspective, because I can't wait to hear your answer on this. What is the status quo that you reject and why? <laughs> I, I really struggled with this one and I've given it quite, quite a bit of, of thought really. And something that popped in my mind, which was unrelated to technology, but is related to the aspirational concepts around small business is, is that that the concept that if you can dream it, you can do it. Okay. There's a lot of where I've come from, where I started this business over many years ago, 15 years ago, from just a concept. I made up the name. I had an idea, all driven by a midlife crisis. And then I had to try and <laughs> navigate my way through it. And, and, and you didn't just you know, buy a Ferrari or a red top. No, no, exactly. No, if, if, that, if, if, if that phrase was correct, we'd all be on Camps Bay, you know, sipping on champagne and popping down oysters right now, but we aren't. And it's, it's this idea of a, of a, of a long slog um, for, because that's really I, where I've got to where I am. It's just one foot in front of the other, slowly making progress, but, but that progress builds and builds on itself. Okay. So the status quo, yeah, I'm a conformist. I don't really question things. If a stop line says stop, I'll stop. I'll probably even stop twice just to be safe. But yeah, question. it was an interesting thing, and, I, and I'll ponder that, but I don't have a good answer. For that. All right, I'm coming back to you for that. We'll, we'll have a chat in the mountain one day. Um, okay. You didn't just arrive online and be successful. Camera stuff, um, it's, it started, and it started very humbly, and you have plugged away. But there were certain 
there were certain kickers that happened. What was the big event that changed your trajectory from um, just an ARB website to camera stuff? So, so in, in the beginning, I, I conceived camera stuff. So one of my other traits, which has, has been mentioned, is the one of being antisocial. So I, I, I pictured this online business as, as pure online where I only had to deal with people via emails and I deal with couriers and deliveries. And in the beginning, that was my, my purest view of camera stuff. But one of the biggest kickers was when we actually opened a shop and I opened a tiny shop and, and that then kicked the turnover up hugely. So even though we've got an online business, um, the fact that we're selling stuff that is quite technical and that people often want to touch and feel um, it's counterintuitive, but our first brick and mortar store was the was what kicked our our e-commerce up hugely. Wow! And wow, and that is so interesting. So, so people it's, are it's, tactile. Yeah, and I think I think there's also people have trust issues. So we we started this 15 years ago. The internet was was very early. People, you know, people didn't know who to trust. Um, and people weren't, there's certain things that you can buy very easily online and other things that, that you can't really. And I think because we were also bringing a lot of new products, we, we've never sold the, the branded product. We always sell the Chinese version, um, a good quality version of, of, the, of the branded version. Yeah. So, yeah. so people didn't know what we were selling. Um, so I think that there was some trust issues now that's not really a case and actually we i had a store in cape town and the complexity of running two stores was too much and yeah. and our systems also weren't ready for that hmm. so so weirdly one of the first kickers was that and then over time we've 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 grown and and it i think another factor that that played to our advantage was getting our head around inventory. We struggled with inventory. And at one point we were known as the shop that never had stock. And that's just an awful reputation. And we've yeah. spent a lot of time on that to, to turn that around. And we're still working on that. That's inventory is probably one of our biggest challenges, um, biggest physical challenges. And, wow. and, and right now with, it's it's even harder, but yeah, it's so. Wow. So you think you run a technology business or a retail business, and it's about finding clients. But we had sufficient clients, but we couldn't keep the inventory going. We then had too many stock items, and so 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 inventory was one of the huge challenges that that we had to get over. And and because it, it kind of makes sense that if you uh, if you if you don't have the stock, you can't do the sales. No matter you so show your marketing can be brilliant, but if you can't deliver and and we got ahead of ourselves and we couldn't keep up with, with demand. So now we're, we're at a point where we're trying to manage that. And, and I think we've got a good balance between supply and demand. Wow. Um, wow. And, and, that, and that was really, a, that made um, a big difference uh, to us was, was uh, sorting the inventory out. Wow, that is, that's answered my question so nicely. Um, because sure. it went into um, the thing that was harder than you anticipated in running an online business. And I think inventory is it. That's the inventory is at the heart of your business. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that you've taken time and, and got through it. And it speaks to the customers on your website and all their testimonials, getting their stuff in 24 hours. So what's on the box is being delivered. Um mm -hmm. You might have made a mistake or two in the past. What stands out for you when you went, oh, bugger? I just, oh, oh, bugger. <laughs> or did you never make that because you're quite conservative? I, I think in, in retrospect, my, my biggest failing was not finding a mentor. Wow. And I, I just, you, you learn too slowly if, if you're having to do it yourself for the first time. And, it, and it's fine because it, it kind of suited my risk appetite. Okay. But, but if I could have found a good mentor, that, that would have just accelerated. And, and, and if there's any advice to give anyone that's getting into something new or, or trying to get better at what they're doing, is find someone who's done it before and, and ask them for some advice. 
just a, a, an aside here. I, I get sent mails all the time for people looking for sponsorships. I need a free this. I need some money for that. Not once have I got an email from someone saying, "Could I have half an hour of your time?" And oh. I, and and I and I don't generally do sponsorships because it, I can't see the return for the business, and I use quite a simplistic measure on that. But but I'd be happy to chat to someone who's willing to to get going with something or is stuck with something. And I think this is that that would be looking back one of the things that I think could have. Um, kicked up the, the pace of growth hugely. The, the, other, the other one, which again is a, is a risk appetite thing, is we, we never chose to take any kind of finance or leverage, uh, leveraging on the business. So it's, it's so growing. Yeah, and, and we've done it all the way. In the beginning, it was impossible. When you really need finance, it's really hard to get. And then when you don't need it, like guys, <laughs> contact me now and offer me, and I'm saying we're okay, we're okay, we're yeah. you know we're thankfully in a position where we can self sustain. But I, d- I don't think having gone into debt, it may have worked, but without experience, it, if you go into debt without experience, you you really got to be in for a, a bumpy ride. But I think that the mentor, uh, if you can find someone who's done it before, yeah. you just you, you it's it's you're not you're not going to bump your head, you're not going to fall in those traps because this path is a is a well-trod path and and people that have been down this road will be able to look at what you're trying to do very quickly and say no don't do that try this have you thought about this and and that was that was one thing that would have i think made a huge difference boom drop the mic that is the mic drop of the podcast i love I love, love, love that. I think there's so much wisdom there. Surprising, but there's so much wisdom there. So I'm, I'm changing one of my questions that, that, that I'm asking it in a different way. If you had yep. to take your, your top three tools, if you had to start again, which I know is terrifying because you're old and that would be scary, but top three tools, what would you take with you? What would the 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 tech tools be that you are oh, never tech, without yes 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 t- tech tech tools mm. so so my browser i wouldn't go anywhere without my browser i'm <laughs> totally addicted to, to data so you need to be able to find an answer so so that so the window to the world so you you've got to have your browser um some kind of database so you've got to be able to store your numbers and your letters and and some tool to automate things and and these would be and that's really core to everything else can cobble onto that um and then yeah if you can throw in some experience if i were to do it again just let me have some experience i don't have to bump my head again on all the things i bump my head on Uh, brett if you were um uh, writing a book or doing an audio book what would yep. the, the title be and um, what would you write in the dedication apart from to me because i'm fabulous you know that's i don't know what i title it so so i really have a passion for small business and seeing people succeed so on the one hand i might write something about business um, because i think there's some concepts that people don't get that are very simple that are overcomplicated but i actually don't think i'd write my business about that uh, my book about that my book would be about the art of life if we could or mastering life and and some of the chapters that that would pop up would be something around happiness okay you know i i struggle with that i we won't go into that now. There won't need tissues, but but how to be happy? The, the the other that I've touched on is is the the, the procrastination. So and the, and that the procrastination actually I haven't mentioned procrastination. No. But procrastination is the flip side of of perfectionism. So with all of our personal personal traits, you're going to have a strong side, but that strong side is going to have a flip side. So so one chapter would be about living the life of a of a recovering perfectionist um and that then that then ties into the next chapter which is how to do things now and not wait for a better time which may never come which is the procrastination chapter so yeah it, it was, i love that these, i love that these, these would be the uh these would be the 
the chapters yeah oh lekka thanks brett um two Pleasure. more and then i'm gonna i'm gonna let you go off because i know it's after hours for you now um, i know if, i need to go for my run it's almost uh, four yeah yeah if if you could sit at the table with an industry hero um probably elon it sounds like it um yeah. what's the first question that you would ask them maybe uh what is something that's really obvious to you that everyone else seems to be missing oh i like that question that's such a nice one so brett what is really obvious to you that you see people missing i was going to ask you on that i don't know the answer <laughs> otherwise i wouldn't um, yeah i'll have to I'll, i'll have to ponder that and i think complexity maybe yeah. and 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 i'm also a very complicated thinker so i can speak wisely about about being simple but i struggle i have to catch myself all the time yeah. and just try and simplify it because mm. my urge is to complicate and my urge is to create okay, a perfect thanks. first version but yeah totally so oh, so i have to catch myself so i can dispense this wisdom but i'm i have to eat some of my own dog food here so mm. i think i think simplicity and i think also just about understanding what's important and what's it, what's important to you what's important to your clients what's important to your staff and and trying to focus on those things and not mm. get distracted by the screamy other unimportant things that are mm. there all the time mm. you know like social media i'm trying to wean myself i'm not doing a great job but i'm addicted to news and mm. social media feeds and they don't add value in some mm. instances they do but it's they designed to suck you in so mm. you have to actively push them away so that's something that is really in our face all the time but just say thanks i've had enough and and do do something simpler uh, or or just don't do that at all so i think that that's mm. maybe something sure right as we wind down our time we've got um um just a bit for one more question what is the mm. one question you wish that i'd asked you <laughs> I must say your questions were really cool. Um, Where was the one that was supposed to answer? My wife. Oh, I can hear uh, that in the background. What about your wife? She's gorgeous, uh, and uh, I love uh, her. Um, yeah. So she's saying the question should have been, "Who is the person that I couldn't have done this without?" And I'll have to say, Angela, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's so that's the question she says that I say should have. But, but in terms of the question. Uh, yeah I, i can't really it, it, i think the bottom line with this with this journey is bit, and and my journey is a small business person interested in technology trying to make a bit of a difference um and trying ultimately to be happy because this is in the in the end it it doesn't matter how much money you have and how many cars and how many followers it's it's really I think the core of what we're trying to do is is find the simple happiness. Um and it and it's about understanding yourself so that you have an idea what your core happiness is and and try and head in that direction. Um just po- keep pointing yourself in that direction and and try to block out some of the noise and just try and focus on on that because i think ultimately regardless of what you're doing and and your goals and all of these fun things and your positions and your friends and i i think we're all looking for that well that's at least my perception mm. of this and and mm. just try and and try and tweak things so that you're you're heading more in that direction than any other and we and we can't always sometimes we heading in the 180 degrees from where we want to be and but just try and bring it back all the time bring it back and stay on stay on course and just keep just keep heading forward i think we often feel like we need to make these huge breakthroughs but but if we just keep direction and and just keep putting in the effort with, without even noticing you'll you'll make great progress so so don't 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 be and i can't even remember the question but don't 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 kind of lose hope and don't mm. don't um get frustrated with things because they're not happening fast enough just just keep the pressure on and keep heading in the right direction and and eventually you'll get there and with the you know if you've got your mentor that mentor they're going to tell you where you're going wrong but 
yeah, try and maintain direction and, and uh, end up in that happy place. Awesome. Um, Brett, you are one of the most balanced people I know. And uh, I think that it comes through again and again and again, how you're continually enriching your life by, by learning not only tech stuff, um, but your way of making tech part of your life and part of your life, part of tech is really an interesting view on it. Um, your passion for small business is very understated in this podcast as to how successful you guys are. And I just want to applaud you for walking the journey, making it there and being an example. And uh, for all our audience members out there, the thing I've taken away from this is find your mentor and email them. Can I have half an hour rather than asking them for um, um, stuff? What's more valuable than time? That's all. That is the most valuable resource out there. From our side at Rocket, um, Brett, I just want to say thank you for an amazing uh, discussion. I've learned so much and I've known you for 20 odd years and uh, you've taught me in 45 minutes. I don't know why you kept it to yourself for so long, buddy. <laughs> On that sure. note, Great. I it's just want to say thanks. Awesome.